My next guest is a woman with serious credentials, a master's degree in public policy from Columbia University, a stint as a policy advisor for the city of New York, but then Nagin Farsad, an American of Iranian descent from Palm Springs, decided if she really wanted to change the world, she should make people laugh. And boy, does she ever. Muslims have been all over the news in recent weeks, either because we should be banning them from coming in or putting them on registries or rejecting Muslim refugees or whatever it is. But the real question is, how can we even tell who's Muslim and who isn't? Hey, are you Muslim? No, you want to prove it? We got some bacon right here. Any red-blooded American who rejects this bacon should really go on the Muslim registry. It's just like a bridal registry, except for you're not gonna get a, a crock pot in the mail or anything. Right. Or just, spoke, you might get surveillance for the rest of your life. Her new book is How to Make White People Laugh, Mission Accomplished Already. Nagin Farsad joins me now. Nagin, it's great to see you. Uh, thanks for having me. I don't wanna challenge your science because you got advanced degrees, but you eat bacon, <laughs> so how is that test? You're a Muslim, how's that scientifically valid? <laughs> things I was trying to point out there is that if you're going to ban Muslims, you're going to need to do it with a religious test, and they're all faulty, including the bacon test, because you're right, like, vegans also don't eat bacon, which, according to the bacon test, would make them Muslim. Excellent Jews point. would be Muslim. So many, you're a Muslim, Thank basically, you according to the bacon <laughs> test. Um, and so I just wanted to sort of test the lo the logical uh, links of, of, of uh, Donald Trump's banning of Muslims. Well, speaking of that, the, last, uh, the name of your last movie is The Muslims Are Coming. Mm. Obviously, come January, you're gonna have to change that. So the pr Muslims are probably not coming. <laughs> so, does, tr does Trump make your life as a Muslim American more difficult? I assume it makes your life as a comedian even better. Yes. Um, well, the funny thing is, is that he's so ludicrous. He is his own punchline. Mm. You find yourself just repeating what he says because there's no way you can enhance it because mm. it is already a joke. Um, and I think, you know, what's really scary is that he could be president of the United States. And I definitely have a dog in this race because I am. An Iranian American lady, Muz, and I'm into my rights. Um, so I don't want to be on a registry. I don't want to be patrolled. I don't want to be banned. None of those things. Um, and and there is like a real. He's a volatile character, and so there's a real chance that that could happen. Very small-minded of you, not wanting to be on a registry or banned. <laughs> so how to make? Uh, by the way, didn't you intern for Hillary? Did I read I that? I did. So how about disclosing that? Yeah, I mean, sorry. That's a full, full disclosure. I interned for Hillary Clinton. And? I stuffed envelopes. So I did some very high-level work. Did you ever uh, see her? There. Yeah, she would come into the office and she uh, she actually is the kind of woman that brings a lot of common to the room. Uh, you can just name like HR 137 and she knows exactly what that is. That. Um, and she's just in extraordinarily intelligent. Okay, so how to make white people laugh. I learned you're an Iranian American. You grew up in Palm Springs. I'm assuming there's not a huge Muslim population in Palm uh, Springs. Is that a safe is, assumption? Uh, there, was a, um, uh, there was about eight of us, I think, really? um, when I was growing up. Something like that. That's not a scientific number, but let's go with it. So what was that like when there's nobody like you? Well, I mean, I think what happens is when you're, you know, a, a part of an underpopulated ethnic minority, um, you sort of like want to glom on to the other major minority groups. So in, in when I was a kid, I want I longed to be Mexican because <laughs> Mexicans had a huge presence in Southern California. They had the, the icons like Cesar Chavez. They had Ranchero music. They had the restaurants and mm. they just, and all of my teachers could pronounce their names. They would roll Rodrigo out. Aurelia, you know, they would roll the R's and then it would come to me and they were like, and we don't know what to do with you. Um, and so I, I, I sort of longed uh, to be Mexican. Um, and I Didn't think you long to be black too? And that's the first chapter of my book is called I Used to Be Black. Yeah. Uh, because when I went to college, there were no Mexicans. I went to school in upstate New York. And um, there, and I was like, for a second, I was like, oh, maybe I should try, like, see, seeing if I could pass as white for a second. Maybe that'll be, you know. And it just turns out there was like far too much uh, data. Dave Matthews involved in being a white person, a lot of uh, monogram towels and you know, whatever. But, 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 so that, that didn't work out did for you, me. I couldn't tell if it was a joke or not. Did you actually have a major in African American I studies? I ended up getting a master's degree in African American What's studies like most comedians. Exactly. Um, it, I, because I just, I really, I identified with the black struggle. I knew it wasn't my struggle. No, it wasn't. But I sort of felt like, eh, close enough. And I think a lot of um, people who are in the hyphenated category, you're Indian Americans, you're Pakistani Americans, you're Filipino Americans,
Republicans feel that way, so they sort of glom onto these larger minority groups because they're like, well, it's not my thing exactly, but it'll do. So how to make white people laugh? When I Before I read the book, obviously, how do I make white people laugh? If I can't make white people laugh, I'm not going to earn a living because almost everybody in the audience is a white person. Is that not the whole concept? Yes? <laughs> I mean, that is what it is, right? Well, like the con I mean, first, of the, the name of the book is also kind of an admission for me of like, this is what I've tried to figure out my entire career is how have to make no white choice, people laugh. Point, and that right? is, I have no choice. It is, the, it is the group. It is the people. And the other aspect of it is white people are in control of a lot of stuff. I don't know if you know this. I do. In control of like uh, space and the government, uh, the mm -hmm. economy, uh, printer cartridges, and uh, Game of Thrones. Right? So a wide range right. of white things. White guys like Barack Obama. And You're exactly <laughs> right. No, I know that. Exactly. <laughs> but no, but for real. For he's real. an aberration. For real, uh, yeah. And he's Muslim. No. So um, if white people Muslim. laugh... The Muslims laugh at you? I mean, you cross some lines that we are told mm. are dangerous mm. for Muslims, at least in some part of the world, to cross. Are Muslims laughing at you or no? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like I have uh, I, I have a lot of Muslim fans, but I, I also have some Muslim haters. Um, conservative Muslims may not like, you know, me uh, talking on stage, you know, about my dating life. Uh, but that's also true for conservative Jews and for conservative Christians. So equal opportunity offender. We only have a couple of seconds. You, the person who's a guest here from time to time whom I love, one of my favorite books is Bowling Alone. Bob Putnam from Harvard. He's an inspiration to you too. What's the Bob yes. Putnam deal? Because I think that we need to do a better job at building community. If you know more, if you know people, it's really hard to hate them. And I think that's like the number one thing that we need to be able to do: meet people from across the aisle, from across the you know the, the other side of the tracks, from across the side of town. Um, and the more people that you meet, and the more people unlike you that you know, it's much harder for you to hate them. Do you know what you and I have in common? What do we have in common? We both had roles in Once Upon a Mattress when we were kids. Is that Shut unbelievable? Up. That is ridiculous. Were you kitchen wench number three well, as I, well? I was number two, actually. <laughs> Again, it's great to see. Your book is fabulous, How to Make White People Laugh.